Hello everyone. In the last video, we discussed the black Letterman formula. Now let us use it for a simple case where we have just one asset. We are going to use the formula for multiple assets using Excel in the next video. For this video, let us assume a single asset and we have given it a name here, asset A. The parameters for asset A are given to us here. We have the implied equilibrium excess returns equal to 3% per month. In terms of the black Litterman formula, this is equivalent to our pi. We also have the variance of implied equilibrium excess returns of 1.2% squared, which in terms of the black Litterman formula is equivalent to our S. We also have a view we have predicted excess returns for this asset of 2% per month, which in black Litterman formula terms is equivalent to our Q. And in this case, this has to be an absolute view because this is just one single asset. We have nothing else that we are comparing it with. So this is just an absolute view. Here we have the uncertainty about our view, 0.25% squared, which in black Litterman formula terms is equivalent to our omega. In the previous video, we decided to use a value for tau, which is a scalar of equal to 1. And in this case, because we are dealing with just one asset, there is going to be no link matrix. So we are assuming the value of P, which is our link matrix basically, to be equal to 1. Let us now write down the black Letterman formula for finding out the excess returns and then plug in our numbers. So let us remind ourselves of that formula. What we have in the first term is tau times the variance covariance matrix inverse plus the transpose of the link matrix times the omega inverse. Omega represents the uncertainty about our views multiplied by the link matrix close brackets and we take the inverse of this whole thing multiplied by now we write down the second term which is basically the weighted average so we write the first weight first tau times s inverse multiplied by our implied equilibrium excess returns pi plus we have p transpose which is the transpose of our link matrix multiplied by omega inverse times our views vector q. Alright, so let us plug in the numbers into our situation here. Well, tau is 1. The value for s is here, 1.2% squared. So we can write here 0 0.012 raised to the power of minus 1 plus P transpose, well P is 1, so we can ignore that, times omega inverse, well omega is here, so I'm writing here 0 0.0025 raised to the power of minus 1, and this whole thing raised to the power of minus 1, and then we have the second term, well this item here is the same as this, so I can write here 0 0.012 raised to the power of minus 1 multiplied by the implied equilibrium excess returns pi which is this well this was supposed to be minus 3 actually so let me make this minus 3 and then write it here minus 0 0.03 plus nothing for p transpose then we have the omega item which is 0 0.0025 raised to the power of minus 1 multiplied by Q. Well, where is the Q? Here. So we write 0 0.02 here. Close brackets. And now let us solve this and see what we get. Let me pull up the calculator. So here is our calculator. What do we don't want to do here? First of all, 0 0.012 raised to the power of minus 1 means 1 over point 
0 1 2. So, let us take the reciprocal of this. So, the reciprocal is going to be 83.33. So, let us write that here 83.33 plus let us work out this term now point zero zero two five. I hope that is correct point zero zero two five. Yeah. We take the reciprocal of that that is 400. So, let me write there 400 all raised to the power of minus 1 and then the second term well this item here is the same as this. So, we have the same value 83.33 multiplied by minus 0 0.03 plus well this item here is the same as this so we can write here 400 multiplied by 0 0.02 close brackets and let us now solve this let me pull up the calculator well 83.33 plus 400 is 483 .33 and we are to raise this to the power of minus 1 which means we are taking the reciprocal this gives me 0 0.002068 so I am going to use roughly 0 0.00207 so let us write here 0 0.00207 and then we are supposed to take this product now 83. 3, 3 multiplied by 0 0.03 gives me 2.4999 which is basically 2.5 but remember this 0 0.03 was with a negative sign so this value will be minus 2.5 so we are going to write here minus 2.5 plus 400 times 0 0.02 is going to give me 4 to the 8 and this is going to be 8 let us just double check it 400 multiplied by 0 0.02 is going to give us 8 yes so all right so this is 8 and so this whole thing is now going to give me let us do that quickly 8 minus 2.5 gives me 5.5 which I am going to multiply with 0 0.00207 and that gives me 0 0.011 so let me minimize this and write this value here 0 0.011 or roughly 1.1 percent per month well so this is the estimate of our expected returns when we use the black Litterman formula for this case the question is does this return make some sense Well, what I am seeing here is that the excess return is actually getting pulled towards our prediction. Well, our prediction is we are believing that this asset would be earning 2% per month, whereas the implied equilibrium excess returns were minus 3% per month. Our result is getting closer to our prediction. Why would that be? Well, we are quite confident about our prediction relative to the market. Let's see here. Uncertainty about our views is 0.25% squared, whereas the variance in the implied equilibrium excess return is much greater, 1.2%. So we are more certain about our views relative to the market. And this certainty is being reflected in our result. The result here, the excess return, is getting pulled or dragged towards our own view. Well, if we use a higher value, for omega our estimate is going to go down towards the implied equilibrium excess returns you can verify that on your own later what black Litterman have allowed us to do is the freedom of having our own views reflected in the expected excess returns and then optimize the portfolio in this case for example if we use the implied equilibrium excess returns we would place a lesser weight on this asset in spite of believing and believing strongly that the asset may in fact offer a better return. Now that our view is incorporated and we have a higher return estimate, we may actually place more weight on this asset in our portfolio, which would make sense. 
But we do need to keep in mind that freedom comes with some responsibility and in this case the onus of having a correctly informed view and the confidence about it is, us, is, is on us. What about the sum of weights? In the last video we said that the first term in the black litterman formula forces the weights to add up to 1. Let us check this out quickly. Let us write down our values here. What's the first term? The first term is what is supposed to force the weights to be equal to 1. So what's the value of the first term? Well this is the value of the first term 0 0.00207. What is our first weight? The first weight is this item here and the value for this item corresponds to this and this corresponds to this. So the first weight is 83.33. What is our second weight? Well the second weight is this and this maps to here and then this maps into this. So the second weight is 400. So let us compute this quickly and see if the weights do in fact add up to 1 or not. Well, what we can do is 0 0.00207 which is the value of the first term multiplied by 83.33 plus 0 0.00207 which is our first term multiplied by the second weight which is 400 and we can check this very quickly now. 0 0.00207 multiplied by 83.33 this gives us 0 0.172 so let's write that here 0 0.172 and plus what's going to be the product of the next item 0 0.00207 multiplied by 400 gives us 0 0.828 so well let me write here 0 0.828 and quickly add up these two I can already see that it's going to be equal to 1 0 0.828 plus 0 0.172 is equal to 1 so the sum of weights is equal to 1 that is what is the function of the first term here this is all I wanted to tell you in this video. See you later.